I sent my boyfriend a $1,000 bill after he and his kid wiped out all of our food supplies. Looking back on those two years with Jack, it's hard not to feel a bitter sense of disappointment and a gnawing realization of how many red flags I might have ignored along the way. We had met two years ago. And even though we came from different worlds and carried different baggage, we tried to make it work. Jack was charming in his way. A single dad doing the best he could. And at the time, that was all that seemed to matter. I had my three kids, a pair of 13-year-old twins and an 11-year-old daughter, and Jack had his 13-year-old daughter. We kept our lives separate but tried to blend them. One cautious step at a time. Living separately wasn't just a logistical decision, it was about protecting our kids and making sure that we were making the right choice. Over those two years, we managed a routine. Two weekends a month, Jack and his daughter would come to stay with us. And most times, things were okay. My daughter and Jack's daughter had their moments. Some petty arguments here and there. But nothing significant enough to raise real alarms. I'm a planner by nature. Organized to the point of probably being obsessive about it. But that's just the way I am. Growing up in a chaotic. Hoarder household meant that I sought stability and control in every area of my life as an adult. And for the most part, I thought I had it under control. I budgeted carefully, kept things clean, and made sure my kids and Jack and his daughter had everything they needed during those visits. I spent around $1 a month on groceries for all of us. Especially when Jack and his daughter came over. Everything went off the rails when my mom asked me to come down to Louisiana to help her move into a retirement community. She's getting older and it was a big transition for her, leaving the home she'd lived in for decades. I couldn't say no and it felt right to bring my kids along to help her out. The timing wasn't perfect, but life rarely is. I needed someone to stay at my house while I was gone. To keep the dehumidifiers running and make sure everything stayed dry. Our house has moisture issues, and the thought of coming back to mold and rust made me anxious. Jack seemed like an easy solution. He and his daughter could have the run of the house and all they had to do was manage the dehumidifier and occupy the place. It felt like a win-win. I didn't really consider it as asking for a favor, it was more of an opportunity for them to enjoy a larger space and a change of scenery. Before I left, I stocked the house with food as usual. I spent $1.092 on a big monthly shop and told Jack they could help themselves to the food while we were gone. It seemed like a reasonable arrangement. I was gone for nearly two weeks longer than I'd initially planned due to unexpected delays with my mom's move. It was exhausting, but my mom needed the help, and I was determined to get everything squared away for her. When I returned home a few days earlier than anticipated, I felt a surge of relief pulling into my driveway. It felt good to be home, to be back in familiar surroundings. But that feeling quickly faded when I opened the door and saw the state of my house. Dishes were piled on the counters and left on the table. Dirty clothes, mine and my daughter's, were scattered around the bedrooms and living room. I felt an immediate sense of panic rising in my chest. And it only grew as I walked through each room, seeing the mess left behind. All I could think about was how hard I'd worked to keep this house clean. To keep everything organized and functional. And now it felt like all that effort had been undone in a matter of days. But the tipping point wasn't the mess, it was the food. As I checked the pantry and freezer, I realized that nearly everything I'd bought was gone. An entire month's worth of groceries, carefully planned and budgeted, devoured in less than two weeks. All that remained were a single pack of hamburger, some vegetables, and a few boxes of pasta. The realization hit me hard. They hadn't just eaten some of the food, they'd consumed nearly all of it. Jack seemed flustered when he saw the look on my face. He apologized, saying he'd meant to clean up before I got back but hadn't expected me so soon. I didn't have the energy to argue or get into it right then. I just told him to leave. He and his daughter left. And the house was finally quiet. It was the first moment of peace I'd felt in days. But my mind was racing. And I couldn't shake the frustration. After taking some time to cool off and process everything, I decided to confront Jack. I told him he needed to reimburse me for the $1 worth of food that he and his daughter had eaten. I knew it wasn't just about the money, it was about the principle. I had said they could have some food. Not that they could clean out the entire house. He tried to justify it, saying his daughter had friends over and that they ate a lot. But that didn't make it any less infuriating. He argued that he shouldn't have to pay me back because I'd said they could eat the food and that I had more than enough money to cover it. He felt it was unfair to expect him to pay when he wasn't financially stable. And I was. It wasn't just the money that got to me. It was the lack of understanding. The complete disregard for what I was trying to say. 
I wasn't asking him to pay me back out of spite or to make him feel bad about his financial situation. I had always supported him, paid for things without question, and helped with bills when he needed it. I had never once thrown money in his face or made him feel less than for not being able to contribute as much. But when he accused me of using my financial stability to shame him and his daughter, something inside me snapped. I realized that this wasn't just a disagreement over food or money. It was a deeper issue, a fundamental lack of respect and understanding. I felt like an outsider in my own relationship, like my boundaries and my efforts were being taken for granted, and I couldn't ignore that anymore. So, I ended things. It wasn't just about the food, but about everything that incident represented. The imbalance, the lack of communication, the feeling of being unappreciated, it all came to a head. And I knew I couldn't keep sacrificing my peace of mind and my self-respect for a relationship that wasn't working. Afterward, I couldn't help but question if I'd done the right thing. It's hard to walk away from something you've invested two years of your life into. Even when it's clearly not healthy anymore. But I couldn't keep ignoring the signs and pretending everything was okay when it wasn't. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that this was a long time coming. I had spent two years trying to make things work. Trying to accommodate Jack and his daughter's needs without ever really addressing my own. And in the end, I was left feeling used and unappreciated. Breaking up with Jack wasn't easy. But it was necessary. I needed to reclaim my space, my boundaries, and my sense of self. And as painful as it was, I knew it was the right decision. I still don't know what the future holds. But for now, I'm focusing on rebuilding and finding my footing again. It's not an easy road. But I'm learning to prioritize my own well-being and trust my instincts. And maybe that's the most important lesson I can take away from all of this. As the days turned into weeks after ending things with Jack, I began to feel the weight of my decision in ways I hadn't anticipated. It wasn't just about losing a relationship, it was about unraveling years of compromises and choices that had become so deeply ingrained in my everyday life. I had built something with Jack, not just a routine but a sense of security. And now that it was over, I was left to reevaluate everything, who I was, what I wanted, and what I was willing to tolerate in my life moving forward. At first, there was a strange sense of liberation. The absence of Jack and his daughter in my home was like a breath of fresh air. One I hadn't realized I needed. For so long, I'd been carrying the invisible weight of our imbalanced relationship, tiptoeing around Jack's insecurities and bending over backward to make things easier for him. Now, for the first time in two years, I felt a kind of freedom in my own home, as if I had reclaimed a space that had gradually slipped out of my control. But that initial sense of relief was quickly followed by a wave of doubt. I started to wonder if I had been too harsh, too demanding. I replayed that last conversation with Jack over and over in my mind, scrutinizing every word and trying to determine if I could have handled things differently. I hadn't wanted it to end this way. I hadn't wanted things to end at all. Not until the last straw broke the tenuous balance we'd been clinging to. But when the dust settled, all that was left were lingering questions and the uncomfortable silence of second-guessing myself. I threw myself into getting my life back on track. It felt like the only way to regain a sense of control was to focus on practical things, my work, my kids, and the house. I started deep cleaning every room, tackling closets and drawers that had long been neglected, scrubbing every inch of the kitchen, and rearranging furniture as if a new layout could somehow shift the energy in the house. It was exhausting, but it was a distraction from the emotional upheaval swirling inside me. During that time, I also wrestled with the realization that this breakup wasn't just about Jack or the food or the money. It was a culmination of everything I had been holding onto, resentments, disappointments, moments where I felt unheard or unappreciated. For so long, I had tried to be the supportive partner, the one who gave without expecting much in return. And now I was forced to confront the consequences of always putting others' needs above my own. The hardest part was explaining everything to my kids. They were used to Jack and his daughter being around. And I could tell they had questions. They tried to be supportive. But I could see the confusion in their eyes. The unspoken questions they didn't know how to voice. It's difficult enough navigating your own emotions during a breakup. But trying to help your kids make sense of it while you're still figuring it out yourself is a whole different kind of challenge. I tried to be as honest as I could, explaining that sometimes relationships change and that what matters most is making choices that are healthy and right for everyone involved. One evening, my daughter came to me while I was folding laundry. She sat on the edge of the bed, fidgeting with the hem of her shirt, and asked, Mom, did you break up because of the food? I took a deep breath, 
knowing that my answer had to be more than just yes or no. I told her that it wasn't really about the food, it was about trust, respect, and understanding. I explained that sometimes people make choices that hurt others, even when they don't mean to, and that when those choices become a pattern, it's important to recognize it and decide what's best for yourself. She seemed to accept my answer, but I couldn't help feeling like I had failed in some way. I wondered if I was teaching my kids the right lessons, if I was setting a good example, or if I was just trying to justify my decisions to myself. It's one thing to stand up for your boundaries as an adult. But when you're a parent, every choice you make feels like a reflection on you in your children's eyes. As time passed, the hurt and anger I felt toward Jack started to fade, replaced by a quieter sense of sadness. It wasn't just the end of a relationship, it was the loss of the future I had imagined. The life I had been trying to build. Jack and I had talked about the possibility of moving in together one day, of blending our families more fully. And now, all those tentative plans felt like fragile castles in the sand, washed away by the rising tide of reality. But amidst the sadness, there was also a growing clarity. I began to recognize the ways I had compromised my own happiness and well-being to keep the peace. I saw the patterns in my past relationships. The way I had always taken on more than my share of the emotional labor. The financial responsibility. And the caretaking. And I realized that this breakup wasn't just about Jack. It was about breaking those patterns and learning to value myself enough to demand more from my relationships. One day, I got a message from Jack. He said he wanted to talk. To try and clear the air. I hesitated. Unsure if I was ready to face him again. Part of me wanted closure. To hear him acknowledge the hurt he had caused and maybe even apologize. But another part of me was wary of reopening old wounds. Of getting drawn back into the same cycle of excuses and misunderstandings. I decided to meet with him. Not because I thought it would change anything. But because I needed to say my piece. When we met. Jack seemed different. More subdued. Almost remorseful. He apologized for the way things had ended. For not listening to my concerns. And for accusing me of flaunting my financial stability in his face. He said he didn't realize how deeply his actions had affected me and that he regretted not taking my feelings seriously. I listened, but I didn't let myself get swept up in his words. I'd spent too long prioritizing his needs over my own, and I wasn't going to fall back into old habits. I told him that while I appreciated the apology, it didn't change the fact that our relationship wasn't working. I needed more than just words, I needed actions that showed respect, understanding, and a willingness to share the responsibilities of a partnership. And if he couldn't give me that, then there was no point in trying to rebuild something that was fundamentally broken. After that conversation, I felt a sense of closure that I hadn't expected. It was bittersweet, but it was also freeing. I knew that moving on wouldn't be easy, but it was necessary if I wanted to create a life that felt true to who I was and what I valued. And for the first time in a long time, I felt like I was taking steps toward that life, one day at a time. In the months that followed, I continued to focus on myself and my kids. I leaned on my support system, friends who understood what I was going through and offered encouragement without judgment. I allowed myself to grieve the loss of the relationship while also recognizing the strength it took to walk away. And slowly, I began to heal. Looking back now, I can see that the breakup with Jack was a turning point in my life. A moment when I chose to prioritize my own well-being and reclaim my voice. It wasn't easy, and there were times when I doubted myself. But I learned that standing up for what you believe in, even when it feels uncomfortable or unpopular, is worth it in the end. I'm still figuring things out, still learning to trust myself and set boundaries. But I know I'm on the right path. And while I don't know what the future holds, I'm no longer afraid of facing it on my own terms. Because for the first time in a long time, I'm putting myself first. And that's a choice I'm finally proud to make.